The baggage of Goldman Sachs alone should give people pause. I'm sorry I have to bring it up, but his wife Heidi works for Goldman Sachs and all of these anti-banksters out there who don't like big banks. How do they then, how do they drive that with, with, with crews? I don't get it. Listen, uh, if, if you're going to worry about a big bank with crews, when Donald's worth ten billion, come on. I mean, that's. that's I know you don't understand. Fact. I don't have a vendetta against uh, big banks at all. That's not my issue. That's not my problem. I don't care what they do. I care about ISIS. That's number one. I care about the Muslim influx into America. That's number one. I care about the Mexican invasion of America. That's number one. I care about English becoming a watered-down language. That's number one. I care about my culture being decimated by Hollywood. That's number one. You know, those are issues that are important to me. You and um, that's why I listen to you because I I agree a thousand percent with with every one of those things that you just said. I just all right. So so we agree that we have to win the election. In a general election, do you actually think Cruz has an electability factor that's high? I I listen. I, I think if, if he articulates our values, which is the majority of the country, this is what people don't get. It's the majority of the country. He are but what he, you see, you're making a mistake. You're basing it upon rationality and upon values. When the general election is not based upon rationality and values, it is based. It's like a variety. Sh it's like a TV show. To, weren't you in high school? Wasn't there a geo election? You remember the elections back in high school? Wasn't it usually the best looking kid who was most popular who won? Well, I got that looking, so yeah. No, no, listen, listen to what I'm saying. It's very important. It applies in the general election in America, too. The average person doesn't even tune into politics until Labor Day of that year. And they look around, and they take a look. And who's this guy? Who's that guy? Who's that one? Who's this one? And a lot of it is based upon popularity, of, based upon looks and delivery, presentation. It's packaging. It's like buying a, a, a package, a bottle of beer. Now, some beers are more pure than others. But they don't sell as well because the packaging is not good. And it's the same in an election. I'm not arguing that I want to drink watered-down beer in a good package. But I want to win the election at all costs. That's what I'm saying. I can't understand how anybody would want to lose the election. I don't know how any so-called conservative would want to lose this election and have eight more years of, of a Democrat socialist machine. There will be nothing left of this country. It'll be mis mincemeat. There'll be no borders, no language, no culture, and we, the American taxpayer, will be the victim in this country, more so than we are today. Thank you for the call, and I'm glad you're listening to the show. And I, I go back to my saying, do you want to be right or do you want to be smart? i got to give you the time, because it's 44 minutes after the hour, by the way, which has some meaning to people somewhere in the world. KSFO Mike in San Francisco. Welcome to the program, Mike. Were you caught on the bridge yesterday when the uh, the queer conversational front blocked the bridge? Uh, no, nope, I was not. I just got a comment, though, about uh, Cruz. I think, you know, it's, he's an ideologue. He doesn't appeal to maybe more than 20% of the country, 30% of the country, who, who are probably, you know, purists, as you call them, conservatives. And um, I think these talkers, these other shows... Um, you know, it's it, to me they've sacrificed. Even the, I mean, he's not even a legal candidate for one. Uh, he, he doesn't qualify to be a president. He's not natural born. He wasn't born here. But two, these other talkers. They, Let, let's stop right there. By the way, that will become an issue in a general election. It will come up again. I was shocked to learn just last night. By the way, that Cruz only denounced. Uh, excuse me, gave up his his Canadian citizenship in 2014. I was shocked to find out that he was a dual citizen until 2014. I was shocked to learn his wife Heidi works for Goldman Sachs. I was stunned to learn all of this. You think that's not going to come up in a general election from the Hillary campaign? Well, one point. A senator can be a senator, even though he's Canadian. He, his mom is a citizen. He's an American citizen, no matter what. Even if he No, no, I, I know all of that, but it's going, to you, it's going to be used against him in the general, whether or not I mention it. Point. He can be a senator. He cannot be president or vice president. Okay. Well, hold on. Whether he can or cannot be, I think, is a, has been adjudicated by big legal scholars. They say he can be. But I think you made an earlier point that I would agree with, which is he appeals to about 20% of the electorate. Now, so what percent would you say Trump appeals to? You know, that's, that remains to be seen, but he's going to get a lot of the crossover vote. 
you know, he's going to get a lot of the African Americans. He gets a lot of the African Americans. They will not vote for Cruz. He's going to get a lot of the Hispanics. They will not vote for Cruz. And he will get a lot of women. And I'll tell you right now, women are not attracted to Ted Cruz. And I'm going to say it like it is. I read people as they present themselves because I'm an expert on, on reading people. Publicly, that is what they look like. He has a certain look like uh, if you were casting uh, a movie about vampires, he could play like a Paul Bear at a vampire funeral. I I'm, I'm sorry to take your breath away. Just put a little blood running down the sides of his mouth. But again, and, gi and give him white makeup. He plays into a stereotype. And I happen to like Cuban people. I mean, I played Cuban music on my show Monday. I'm nothing against Cuban people. You want me to raise that issue? I will tell you that his last name is a deficit to the average white voter. You want me to lay it on the line? No one's even said that because they're afraid of even talking about it. The average white voter will confuse him with being an illegal alien. Do you know that as well? You may not know that, but when they go in the poll, a lot of things happen behind the screen that don't happen outside the screen with polls. For example, when Donald Trump was on my show last week, he said that he polls 25% of African Americans like him, right? That means 50% of them will vote for him when they're not answering a question, let's say, in, in, in public to a pollster. And I will tell you that most white voters are leery of people with Hispanic last names in leadership positions. No matter what they may say publicly, privately, that is a fact. That when they go there, they're going to say, I'm not so sure. I want a guy with an American name. I'm not saying that's the way it is. I'm saying that's the way they think it is. Thanks for the call back in a minute. All right, here are the news headlines at the end of the hour here. Federal Judge Obama appointed, a judge he appointed, Amy Berman, liberal through and through, has just stricken his fast and furious executive privilege claim. <laughs> she ruled against him. U.S. District Judge Amy Berman has struck down Obama's assertion of executive privilege over documents pertaining to Operation Fast and Furious. She was appointed to the court by President Owen 11, and she ruled against him. I'm not shocked by this. I found in my own life, I had a case before an Obama-appointed judge in a U.S. District Court, and I was very nervous that she would rule polit for political reasons. She ruled in my favor. She ruled strongly in my favor. So many of these judges are, frankly, extremely fair. And I would say especially on the federal level. That's what I found. Now, I can't say the same for the San Francisco Superior Court or other courts at the city level or, the, or such. But I can, I would say that I've, my experience has been amazing. How would you explain the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, the most liberal court in America, voted in my favor in the last case where I then had a, the guy took it to the Supreme Court in order to avoid paying me? Costing me another hundred grand. Why? Why? Because they saw that the, the guy had no bearing, the case had no value, and they ruled accordingly. So I'm not shocked that a, uh, um, a judge appointed by him would strike down his executive privilege claim on the Fast and Furious. What it will lead to is who knows, right? We don't know. What else is in the news that you need to know? Nothing. Listen to Chocolate on the way out. Chocolate. He died last week. Another one who went by the way of all flesh. Manufacturer stands by policy on Muslim prayer breaks. You hear this? The racket they're pulling now? Yeah, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Not to the American Islamic Anti-Civil Liberties Group. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. 
is our number three, The Savage Nation. We open with some of the greatest Cuban musicians in the world. This is the group called Cachao, and the great trumpeteer Chocolate played with him and many other groups. I know it means nothing to the average person. It's like, why is he doing it? We should be talking about cruising Trump. Cruising with Trump. Cruising with Trump. But I'd rather... Let me hear this for another minute, because I need the energy. I had a bad night. Makes me dance inside my soul. I feel like I'm dancing on, uh, in front of the microphone. Nah, the three in the morning dog thing. It's not that he's not going to survive it, okay? He's got the murmur. Then he's got to have the teeth out. Then the, he's got to go to a heart doctor first to see if his heart's strong enough for anesthesia. Then they could pull the teeth. Blah, blah, blah. So it's like, of course he'll survive it. It's a minor thing, really, in a way. And But nevertheless, you see already, I mean, I had him since he's a little black puppy on the stage with me in 2000. I don't even remember anymore. I don't know when I got him. 2005, I was on the stage at the Concord Pavilion, now called the Chronicle Pavilion. We had 6,000 people paying, by the way, long before these events were ever known to to mankind <laughs> amongst conservative talk shows. I was, and Teddy was on the stage with me. He was a little black dog, turned gray. The, the love of my life. I mean, he's my best friend. He's with me day and night. I don't know. Any dog owner knows what I'm talking about. Whatever you do, they're there with you. There really is a saying, dog is man's best friend. And the irony is this May, a book is coming out by the publisher who gave you Ground Zero. The pictures of Teddy will kill you. They're beautiful. They're great. Me and him, and they're doing everything together, right? And now this comes up, says, well, of course he'll survive it. He'll be here for the book. But, you know, eventually that's the whole thing. Another one, another box with the ashes, or this time in the ground. With a, I swear to God, my mind was running last night. I have some Mexican friends. I saying I'm don't don't think I'm like macabre now. I was saying, well, if I want to bury him, I have a a, a a little area of a house I have in the country. I'm thinking of burying. God forbid, when the dog dies this time, I don't want ashes no more. So I said, wait a minute. When you bury a dog, you put him in a coffin. What do you do? And I said, who makes coffins? A little coffin for a little dog. And I swear, my mind was like running down. Look, I'm a novelist, so I can do anything with my head. The thing is, I get in trouble following my own imagination. I said, wait a minute, I have a Mexican friend. I'll bet you they have small coffins in the Mexican community for, God forbid, when, when an infant dies, right? I was already in my mind at the coffin maker in the Mexican neighborhood, picking one out. And I was at the ground ready with, with close friends with the prayers. This is crazy. I mean, but I can't help it. So that's why I'm playing the music. Now, play the music. Now, I'm bumming the audience out. All I want to hear is Cruz and Trump and Palin and Nixon and Nixon. Is Nixon alive? Maybe Nixon can run. He was a true conservative. Maybe they can run Nixon. I, I missed my calling. I should have been a Latin singer. Unfortunately, I can't sing and I'm not Latin. And no one ever offered me the job. But I am going to sing, I told you, with my friend Doc's band. And I'm going to be known as Miguelito from the Bronx. And I'm going to sing some, uh, some, some salsa music tunes. Maybe it'll get me out of my state of where it's going, you know. Trump pulls got further right on immigration as Democrats veer left. Obama too cautious in bombing Islamic State, former war, planners say. U.S. Navy sailors escorted at gunpoint. We forgot that already. After our good friends in Iran uh, threatened them with guns. That's all. Jerry Falwell Jr.'s blessing may give Donald Trump edge with evangelicals. Well, they're important. It's a big group. Big group. I wonder what my audience, how do you define my audience? Are they evangelicals? Some. Are there any evangelicals in the crowd? Raise your hand if you're an evangelical and you like Michael Savage and why. I bet there are. I'm sure there are. I'm the only one in radio who reads the Bible. But that's not my core audience. I probably have people from all walks of life, union members, liberals, ex-liberals probably listen to me and like me. And they're the ones who are going to vote for Trump, I think, by the way. This crossover that, see, the crossover that I attract is the crossover that Trump is going to attract. Because I'm not an extremist, although I've been painted as such, by the way. Trump, by the way, gave a speech today in New Hampshire. Our election system is so broken in this country. Why do we count upon people in New Hampshire, an all-white state that has about 12,000 people in the entire state that vote? Of course it's higher. Iowa now, that's a bellwether for America. It's not 1860! What are you doing with these stupid primaries? The system we have is so screwed up, it's unbelievable. We're all going to fall on the sword if he loses in, uh, in New Hampshire. 1,200 people in New Hampshire are going to determine whether he's... Or in Iowa. 
I mean, God bless the ethanol producers. I love them all. But the thing is, they don't represent all of America. Again, Iowa, New Hampshire, New Hampshire. It's crazy. I feel like I'm living in another century watching this stupid election. Palin endorses Trump, and a real smart move that was. That was 